always very excited if new stuff arrives. And this is especially true if it's a full box of batteries. I mean, come on, are you not getting excited if you order something online and then finally it shows up in the mail? This box with batteries just got delivered. I'm super excited. But before we are going to open this one, I just want to mention this again. Be very, very safe what you are doing with these batteries. Especially these 280 ampere hour batteries we ordered now. They are storing an awful amount of energy. Be very, very careful what you are doing to not make a short. Safety is our highest priority here on the channel. I just want to mention this again before we get started. Nice! So the first thing you should always do is inspect the batteries and the box for any damage. Take out these batteries and have a look if there are any dents, cracks or scratches, if the tape is correctly on, if there is no damage around the terminals, if the over pressure valve is alright and if the barcode and text is intact here. If you have any concerns with your delivery, take photos and send them back to your supplier for advice. As you know from one of my last videos, I had two batteries which were, uh, let's say, the quality wasn't quite up to the standard I was expecting. And after a little bit back and forward emailing, they acknowledged that and, and well, they eventually replaced the batteries with two new ones. Come on, focus. See this one here has a little bit of a, a heat shrink bubble problem here where you can see it's only some bubbles underneath. Come on, focus. And there's also one with a small little tiny dent here in the corner. You can see that here. But again, this is just the aluminium casing. I'm not, I'm not overly concerned about such little things, you know, it's... That's all good. And you should also check the bag with the accessories like the bus bars, um, ring terminals and all these screws. Just make sure that's the right amount and they're all here as advertised. I think most of the suppliers of these batteries, they deliver these accessories included. It's always better to check. This, this here is now from two different deliveries, so that's a bit excessive. And now you've got them finally on your workbench and you cannot wait to hook them up to your solar and get them charged, right? I know this is all super exciting having these batteries finally here. But um, after the mechanical inspection, we should also do an electrical inspection. We should measure some parameters with these cells just to make sure they are all right. So first of all, put them on your workbench and make sure that you have all the negative terminals pointing to one direction and all the positive terminals pointing to the other direction. So don't mix them up. And the next step is to remove this electrical insulation tape here, which covers the terminals. And I usually, I usually stick this plastic to the side of the cell, just in case I need to cover this terminal again later on. And again here, be very, very careful what you do because you are exposing now the terminals. If you do a short between the positive and the negative of one of these cells or even multiple cells, <laughs> that's not good. At the moment we don't have any protection gear at these battery cells. These are raw battery cells with the exposed positive and negative terminal. So be very, very careful what you are doing. Okay, so, and the next step will be to measure the voltage of each individual battery cell now with the help of a digital multimeter. You can have one of these which has a clamp ampere meter or you can you can, where's the, the other, ah, oh, here. Or you can use such a standard multimeter. It doesn't really matter as long as you can measure the voltage, that is fine. And now is another precaution. You should never, never, ever put anything on top of the bare battery cells of the exposed terminals. Even if it is made out of plastic, just don't get into the habit and put anything on top of the batteries if the terminals are exposed. Never, ever do that. Just, uh, just stay safe. Okay, so now you take your multimeter, set this one to voltage DC, because we've got DC. And now you've got a black and a red probe. 
The black is the negative and the red one is the positive. Unfortunately, the cells are a bit bad designed because they have used the black color for the positive terminals here, which is actually black is always the negative probe or the negative cable. So I don't really like this design of these battery cells. They should have changed the color around, making the black one the negative and the white one the positive. You've got the markings of the terminals here printed in as well. And I think there is a plus sign here directly on the plastic as well. Yep, there's a plus and minus. So you know which one is the positive and negative terminal. And because these battery cells, they are already matched from the factory in terms of capacity, uh, internal resistance and voltage, we should measure exactly the same voltage now on every individual cell. So take your, take your negative probe to the negative terminal and the positive probe to the positive terminal and read the voltage, 3.56. And the same on the next cell, negative to negative, positive to positive, 3.31, 3.32, So it looks like these three cells are the same voltage, but this one isn't, 3.56. <laughs> on per on purpose, I re I charge this battery up a little bit to have a higher voltage, just to show you why it is important to measure the voltage once you unpack your your batteries from the box. You should measure the voltage and make sure it is the same, because they can make a mistake in the factory and give you a battery from a different batch or a different charge. And as you can see, this one has about 0.3 volts more as the other one. So presumably this one is on a higher state of charge than the other ones. And if we put them now all in parallel to balance the battery, so we're connecting all the negative terminals together and on the other side all the positive terminals together, the battery with a higher state of charge will obviously dump a lot of energy into the other cells to recharge them and eventually they will equalize, they will balance themselves. And this is pretty much the same if you have four water tanks now and you connect them with a hose at the bottom. What will happen is the water level in all these tanks will balance out over time. So if you have more water in one tank, it will go down and equalizes on all the others. Eventually you will have the same water height in all the tanks. And this is exactly the same what we are doing now right now. We want to balance these cells. Even the factory has done it already. But you should do it yourself anyway again. You should definitely balance the batteries before you start using them in your solar configuration. And for the moment let's have a look at these two battery cells here. So this one is 3.3 volts and this one is almost 3.6 volts. So if we put them in parallel now, this one will be discharged and this one will be charged. So they are balancing each other out. And because we have only a difference of 0.3 volts now, it doesn't really matter because the voltage difference is so small, there will be current flowing from this battery to this battery, but I don't expect this to be very high. In future setups of your battery bank, if you put them in parallel and they have different voltages, there could be an awful lot of current flowing from the higher charged battery into the one with the lower charge. So you need to be very careful. What you usually should do in this case is recharge these three batteries to 3.6 volts so they have the same voltage level as this one. Or alternatively you can just discharge this battery cell to get to the same voltage level as the other ones are. But in this case I just want to show you how many amps are flowing from the battery with a higher charge to the battery with a lower charge. So I connected the negative with the other negative already and now we've got the positive here and I just connect this one with the positive of the other battery cell. So in this case we have seven amps going from one battery to another battery. So as I said before this is not dramatic because the voltage difference is only 0.3 volts the higher the voltage difference is between the batteries, the more it pushes the electrons and the higher the current is, of course. So 6 amps and you can see it's going down now while one battery is being discharged and the other one is being charged. So this is all good. 
Well, and finally, here's the fun part. We are connecting the batteries for the very first time together and balance them. You should balance your battery pack for at least overnight, better for one full day, just to be on the safe side and make sure they are fully balanced before we do anything else with it. And because we have all the terminals exposed now and we are handling with these bus bars here and they can easily touch the positive, the positive and the negative terminal at the same time, we need to be very careful what we are doing. Um, where is my... here. So what I would suggest is you're covering up the terminals you're currently not working on. I've got an offcut here of an insulation panel, but you can also use any kind of plastic or even a cardboard would, would do it. So even if I drop accidentally something or I have other tools which are not insulated, you know, I cannot do any shorts or something because I only have the negative terminals exposed at the moment. So again, as a habit, be very, very safe, work slowly, think what you are doing and what potentially could happen. Okay, so connecting these batteries together in for a balance, you start with two cells here at the end. And we probably just secure this bus bar here with one screw. And then you keep going and connect the other ones as well. But you should not follow this pattern because this one would be a little bit on an angle now. It sits on top of the other bus bar and here on top of the terminal directly. So you can actually see it sitting a little bit on an angle then. So do these other ones first and then take a third one and put them on top. And this one is now straight because it sits on both bus bars here. It's sitting on the same height. And tighten these screws slightly. They don't have to be correctly tightened and everything. It's just for the balance at the moment, so that's fine. Just make sure they are not loose. And then we shift the uh, insulation panel over and cover the negative terminals. So again, if I drop my screwdriver or something, it cannot touch any of the already connected bus bars. And then we do the same on the other side. All right, and we are now done. Now the whole pack of four battery cells is in balance mode. That means we've connected all the negatives and all the positives together and let the battery sit for at least overnight, better one day. And while you are doing this, you should again cover up these exposed terminals. And that's what you can use the tape we saved from the terminals as well, just to um, secure, yeah, just to secure whatever you have on top of it, your cardboard or your insulation panel, your plastic, whatever. So this can sit there now for a whole day and the batteries will be 100% balanced tomorrow. Okay guys, I think this is it for today's video. I just wanted to make this, um, for most of us, it is very obvious what to do with battery cells when they come in, but we have a lot of beginners watching as well. And I wanted to make sure this is all covered, what you should do when your box when your box of batteries is arriving because everyone is getting so excited about these batteries now. The prices have come down so much now. Almost everyone can afford these batteries now. And if you have solar already on your roof, well, there's nothing better to make your own electricity and store it in some of these batteries. All right, guys, so far this video from today, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial here, how to handle these raw batteries. If I have missed anything, please put this down in the comments so everyone can benefit of the additional information. Thank you so much and we shall see us again in the next video very soon. I've got something very special coming up, three part video. Be excited. Thanks for watching guys. And also thank you so much for 400 subscribers. <laughs> that is insane. Thank you so much, really. I really appreciate that so many people have subscribed and are interested in this kind of videos and technology. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.